Welcome to this Druid All-In, or Druid Lunge as I call it here, Deck Tech video. This is a donation deck list that I made a couple tweaks on, um, and let's just jump right in. This deck is built around maximizing the efficiency of Devoted Druid Vizier Combo. What that means is this deck wants to drop a turn 2 Druid as often as possible and follow that up with a turn 3 Vizier Remedies or some way to grab Vizier like a Finale or E-Call into Vizier and then in a win condition. The win conditions I'll put over here. Are these cards right here. Finale of Devastation with infinite mana uh, makes your creatures infinitely large and lets you swing in that turn. Walking Ballista is the classic win condition where you just pump up really big. Um, and Shalai lets you not only give other, your other creatures hexproof, but then with infinite mana you can use this little bottom text here, which reads, pay six mana, give all your creatures plus one, plus one. A plus one, plus one counter, if you want to be specific. So those are the win conditions. Eternal Witness combos nicely with Finale of Devastation. So you can have a play pattern where you have like a, uh, a hand with two lands, a Devoted Druid, a Finale of Devastation, and an Eternal Witness. That's five cards. Those five cards are a turn three kill. You play your turn two Devoted Druid, turn three, you have four mana thanks to the Druid and your two lands because you can use Druid to one, at one point get an extra mana boost with the minus one, minus one counter on it. Finale for two, put a Vizier in play, get three mana, play Ewit, pick up the Finale, and then do it again. For that reason alone, I think Eternal Witness always deserves a slot in any Druid Finale deck. Also, Eternal Witness gets pretty good post-board when you get access to Path to Exile and Veil of Summer in those specific matchups. Now, Ranger Captain is also a tutor. Ranger Captain lets you search up your Walking Ballista, a Giver, or a Mana Dork, while also protecting your combo on key turns and being really key in disrupting like a Storm Opponent, uh, countering a Suspend card, things like that. Or even just a Cascade. Oh, you're Cascading into Living End? Um, I'm going to sacrifice Ranger Captain. Uh, so the other tutors here, I'll just lay them out right here are Once Upon a Times, which are not exactly tutors, but digging five deep is pretty strong. Although you will see a game in this league where I dig ten deep, and it is not enough. Uh, that's a spoiler, I'm sorry. Sometimes digging digging five deep is not the same as digging for a specific answer. The problem with Eldamri's Call is it costs white mana, which means sometimes when you're making infinite green mana, you just don't have that single extra white source to be able to combo kill your opponent that turn, which is where the cards like Once Upon a Time are nice and uh, Finale is nice. So these cards can all tutor up specific things that you're looking for, with that being the key combo you're trying to protect. Now, other cards here, you're, you're looking at Mana Dorks, which make it more efficient for you to get to an extra white source, for example, for Eldamri's Call, an extra white source if you're trying to combo with Shalai, or just maybe you're stuck on one land or your other land is a Dryad Arbor. Mana Dorks are very, very strong in this deck, especially since you can, in once upon a time, grab a Dork off of a one land hand and kind of go off from there. Now, Exalted Triggers can get pretty real, especially with a Shalai Beatdown plan, which is this deck's plan B. Plan B involves this card here, which is Giver of Runes, which is not only used to drop a turn 1 for a turn 2 Druid protection, but Giver of Runes is also there to protect Shalai. So if you can land a Shalai and a Giver of Runes, you effectively give given your Giver of Runes hexproof, and Giver of Runes can give Shalai instant speed protection from any color or colorless, so you can kind of lock your opponent out from interacting you during the game. Eventually you get to 6 mana, you can just start pumping your team every turn and slowly win the game from there. The flex spots are really right here. Uh, this list is running a couple of Vines of Vast Woods, Postmortem Lunge. I really think Postmortem Lunge is a card that should be at least 3 of. The 4th one I go back and forth on. Um, if you're expecting a lot more removal, I think the 4th one is very necessary. But Vines of Vastwood fulfills a similar role. Uh, Vines is very good with the play pattern where you go turn one dork, turn two druid, hold a mana up. And if they try removing a druid, you can go Vines. Now, 
Vines of Vastwood is just like an ugly, ugly card. Like Veil of Summer is just so much better, but Veil of Summer doesn't protect your cards against red spells or, you know, random little things like that or walking ballista. So I see the need for it. I just really don't like that card. Although of note, if you do have two green mana, you can give your Druid plus four plus four which, with how Druid works with the untap mechanic, if you don't have a Vizier in play, can actually net you positive mana. Cute little interaction for a one-time use. So, Postmortem Lunge is there to, if your Druid dies, you can set up a play pattern where you can just sculpt your hand with your Eldamri's Call, and maybe your Finale, your Once Upon a Times, and get to a spot where you can just, out of nowhere, use the Druid that's in your graveyard and lethal kill your opponent. I did make a few alterations to the mana base. I think the mana base needs, I think the mana base you want heavy green um, to be able to drop a noble and uh, your druid. Like a turn one noble, turn two druid. You also need a lot of green for all these cards, but you need excessive amounts of white mana to be able to reliably cast like Ranger Captain and also to cast turn one Giver of Runes. To put this in perspective, if we weren't accounting for mana dorks, this we need white as badly as like Jund needs black. Like, we need white turn one, like Jund needs Thoughtseize turn one, and turn three, we need Ranger Captain, which casts double white, like Liliana costs double black. So, we need a lot of white mana. Luckily, we're since we're a two-color deck, we have a lot of dual lands here. Four Horizon Canopies, which are really good at re redrawing, especially if you're going infinite. You can use a Horizon Canopy to kind of get you one card closer. Four Razor Verge Thicket, which is the Painless Dual Land, which is absolutely fantastic here. Uh, I am running six fetch lands, all green fetch lands. There might be some, like some need or want to grab excessive, like a like a, a white fetch land. I just don't think we need it. I'd rather have the green fetch land. I don't want to be fetching this basic plains too too often. I'd rather fetch the basic forest first. Um, under a Blood Moon, that lets me get, like, Once Upon a Time, Dorks out, and kind of go from there. Not that anyone should be playing Blood Moon against a Dork deck, but I've seen weirder things. The one of Dried Arbor is there to be cute with Finale Devastation, where you can tap two green mana and make your own Rampant Growth. Let's say you're really light on lands, you have a Shalai draw kill, and you need to get to that fourth mana. Well, you can Finale, grab Dried Arbor, put it in play. So that's the, the main board here. Sideboard, we're looking at Night of Autumn, which is really just there to help a little bit. Like, uh, Night of Autumn is almost cuttable in this list. Like, if you're looking at this and being like, I don't like Night of Autumn, I kind of agree with you. Very good against Burn, where Night of Autumn gains you four life, which effectively counters a, like a Boros Charm and trades with a Goblin Guide. But Burn's not really played right now. And Mono Red Prowess is played instead, and Knight of Autumn's terrible against Mono Red Prowess because it doesn't trade with the creature, doesn't trade with a full card, it just trades to half of a card in Lava Dart, and the 4 life is much less relevant because they're punching you for 7 or 8 instead of just 2. So it doesn't really trade very well in that spot. So I could see this being cuttable. I still just like the flexibility it offers. I like it more than, say, Caustic Caterpillar. I know Caustic Caterpillar is tutorable under a Ranger Captain of Eos, but we only run one Ranger Captain, so I don't think that's super relevant. I'd rather just have the slightly stronger card, more flexible card here. Like, I'm not bringing... This is a card I could bring in. I, I will bring in against Burn. Uh, I'm not bringing Caustic Caterpillar. I think Spellskite's a little bit underappreciated here. Um, there's a weird interaction that I, I oh, I'll just, <laughs> Spellskite causes some weird in-game moments, but Spellskite is really, really powerful, especially in a list with Giver, um, which is just kind of cool, because you can protect your Spellskite from weird spots, just bear in mind the change target is, you have to pick a legal thing before you give Giver protection, so... Uh, Eldritch Evolution is there on decks you want to race, say Amulet Titan, Tron, things like that, where you can go like a turn one dork, and then you can play your second land drop, Eldritch Evolution that into a druid, and now all of a sudden you're you're more consistently dropping a turn two druid. 
Evolution also lets you, um, if you have Evolution, if you have the infinite mana, but you have, and you have Evolution, but you only have a Druid and Vizier in play, you can just make a ton of mana, sacrifice the Vizier to the Evolution, grab a Shalai, and now you win the game. Online, that's much, much harder, but in paper, that's just something you can say, and I have 10 million mana, and then go from there. Tireless Tracker is a the one grind card to put in this slot, something you want against control decks primarily, or Jund. Uh, Shadow would also be good, and something that's just going to rip your, rip your hand apart, rip your deck apart, and you kind of want to play through. It's one reason why I threw the extra fetch land in, just to make your sideboard tracker a little bit better. I have a sideboard Ranger Captain of Eos. When do you want Ranger Captain, you might ask. Any grindy matchup, uh, Ranger Captain's really good. Also, Ranger Captain against Ad Nauseam, against Storm. Uh, any matchup where you want to con or, and control, any matchup where you want to control when your opponent can and cannot cast um, non-creature spells. Eidolon of Rhetoric is there again for Ad Nauseam and Storm. Um, you can also bring it in if you want against Mono Red, Mono Red Prowess. I just don't think it's particularly great there, but you could have an argument for it. I just don't like it. It's really just there strictly for the spell-based combo decks. Now, I made a split here of Oriok Champion and Core Firewalker. The reason being is Oriok Champion is really good against Death Shadow, and Core Firewalker is really good against any Mono Red deck. Of note, they're now playing Stomp, and Stomp gets around protection from red. If they Stomp you or one of your creatures, and you are already in the process of blocking, or block afterwards. So bear that in mind, Stomp or skull crack, both can get around your protection from red. So I like the split here. Oriok Champion is also interesting um, against these, uh, against like an opposing Kitchen Finks combo deck, where if you have an Oriok in play, you also gain lots of life. Not as powerful, because you're gaining one at a time, they're getting two, but just something that's interesting. I would not bring this in against the Heliod Finks deck, but it's just intriguing when you can have that little option there. What Oriok's really good for is Jund, Shadow, um, and then again, that mo those mono red decks. Where if you can just keep, oh, all of a sudden now your, noble, your top deck Noble Hierarch gains you a life. Cool. Interesting. Uh, I think it's better than having two core Firewalkers. I like having this split to be a little bit better against Death Shadow decks. Uh, three... Path to Exiles. Uh, let me just get back to the Oriok Champion Core Firewalker split. So the reason for that, instead of having two Core Firewalkers or two Oriok Champions, is they're both better in different spots. But we need to build our sideboards in a manner where we have a lot of flexibility, which is why, again, I prefer Knight of Autumn over Caustic Caterpillar. It can come in in more spots. Like, if I'm expecting my opponent to shred my hands, I need more threats. Knight of Autumn is a 3-mana 4-3. That's way better than... A Vizier of Remedies, I'm not expecting to be able to combo. Granted, this is all in Druid, so I'm going to have to combo through a lot more things. So the Oriok Champion Core Firewalker split is because they both do independent things very, very good. And they're, but they're also both good against red decks. Core Firewalker obviously being better against Mono Red or Burn. Oriok being an absolute stomp house against the Shadow decks. Three Path to Exiles, I'm going to bring these in against other other creature-based combo decks, like other Druid, other Finx decks. I'm also going to bring it against Disruptive decks, um, like a Death Shadow deck, um, that can I need to slow them down. Also, something you can bring in against Grizzlebrand decks, if you time it right. Four Veil of Summer, because this card is absolutely busted. This card makes Vines of Vastwood look unplayable. So... Vines is a very good card. It will save you in certain spots, but Veil of Summer, again, in the same matchups, just absolutely amazing. It's, it's one mana cryptic command. So, general rules of sideboarding with all in. Now, I, I've often said there's three types of druid matchups. There's, you can combo, or maybe you need to combo. This is Tron, right? This is Amulet Titan. This is other druid decks now what you want to do in those matchups is if you're not expecting a ton of removal you can side out a couple of the lunges maybe even a couple of the vast finds of vast wood and if you need to bring in anything you bring in a couple hate cards so for example let's say we're playing the mirror i'd be bringing in three path exiles and probably an eldritch evolution 
and maybe that spell skite if I know that my opponent is going to be bringing in a ton of removal, but probably not. And I can side out the redundant pieces. For example, if I'm on the and if I'm on the um, draw, I can side out this Dryad Arbor, which does nothing in any matchup where I'm like I desperately need to combo. Dryad Arbor is useless. The second type of matchup is it'll be tough. But there's windows where you can combo. This is the Jund matchup, the blue-white control matchup. And All In is just like, yeah, um, this is where Postmortem Lunge shines. In these matchups, you probably want Veil of Summers. In this, these matchups, you might even want a couple grindy cards, something like this, right? And you want to be taking out a couple copies of Vizier in one or two tutors. You want to keep in as many protection spells as possible. You want to keep in the post-mortem lunges, but you want to have extra ways of winning around just Druid, or rather, a ways of prolonging the game. For example, if I'm playing against Death Shadow, I'm going to be bringing in these Path to Exiles to make to make it so I don't just die to my opponent's fast draws. I don't want to die to turn one thoughts, these turn two shadow. Like I just don't want to die to that. A third type of matchup, which doesn't really exist with this archetype, is matchups you cannot combo in. Those matchups are Mono Red um, and Grixis Shadow. In these matchups, I want to become more of a mid-range deck, but I still need to have a line somewhere where it's how many lunges am I keeping in? Am I keeping in any lunges? Against Shadow and Burn, uh, lunge can be a very, very powerful card. Against Burn, it can sometimes be a liability because we can't cast black mana with the exception of this one Bird's Paradise. So all of a sudden, now you have to stay at least two life, and that can be kind of rough and kind of puts you in an awkward spot. In those matchups, I want all of my hate cards. I'm going to side out most of my Viziers, but at least keep one or two, and I can side out a couple um, Eldamri's Call or finale depending upon the matchup if i'm still geared a little bit more towards comboing uh, i want the finale if i just need to grab specific hate cards like let's say against burn i want to go turn two call and i can go turn three knight of autumn or turn two call turn three Oriok champion or core firewalker that's a little bit slow but i'm grabbing my best card of that specific matchup where finale can't do that that's when you want to pick one or the other so a little bit of sideboarding here um <laughs> you can, it, the, the deck is a, a blast to play. There's a lot of weird little lines, but sometimes you just... I feel like when I lose to this deck, it's because my opponent had more interaction than I had ways around it. So, hope you like the deck deck and short sideboard guide. I will see you guys in the next one.